Hey y'all, I'm Derek and welcome to the first anniversary special of Bad Movie Fry Night. Yes, one year ago, I started a quaint little show wanting to show the world bad movies and good food for viewing parties. Several episodes later, this little show has come a long way. From the annoying theme music from the first month, to me finding out about the YouTube audio library, from the movie Troll, to... Troll 2. Yeah, we're covering the notorious Troll 2 today. It just seems proper to go full circle, you know? Even though we're covering Troll 2, I should point out that the movie only shares similarity with the original Troll in name only. The movie was originally entitled Goblins, and was written by the director's wife to blow off some anger directed toward her friends who were all becoming vocal vegetarians. The film was shot in 1989 in Utah, and the North American distributor, Transworld, thought that an independent horror film named Goblins wouldn't sell very well, so they changed the name in order to capitalize on the success of the Empire Pictures film Troll. When the film first came out, it flopped, being almost immediately shunned to the discount bins of video stores. But with the advent of cable TV, and in particular HBO, this movie soon gained a cult following. And for the movie tonight, we're making corn fritters. Right now, I'm just sifting together a cup of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. So let's get started. The movie starts off with a voiceover as the Ricola guy walks through the forest. And then... Attack! The goblins start attacking him, but soon we find out it's a story being told by Grandpa to the lead, Joshua. Because I always like hearing stories about men being eaten by monsters right before I go to bed. No, seriously, I do. Okay, so the story is interrupted by Joshua's mom, and... What? Grandpa isn't really there? Grandpa Seth has been gone for more than six months now. You were at the funeral, and I know it... <laughs> Great read there, honey. Seriously, this reading is terrible. But there is a technical issue why. You see, the director, Claudio Fragrasso, could not really speak or write English, and would not allow any ad-lib, and insisted the script be recited phonetically. So the outcome is terrible delivery on terribly written lines. Anyways, Joshua goes to bed, and we meet the other members of the family. First, the sister Holly, and then good old dad, who's ecstatic about the upcoming family vacation to a small town called Nilbog. And then mom vents her worries. Michael? Yeah? Who are the goblins? Well, they're a proto-industrial band that was used very often in Italian horror films throughout the 1980s, after George Romero used them as part of the score of Dawn of the Dead. But that's neither here nor there. And then we cut back to Holly, who's being visited by her boyfriend, Elliot, and his friends, Brent, Arnold, and Drew. Holly invites him on the vacation, but only if he doesn't bring his friends. But in the morning, he doesn't show up, and the family heads out. <sighs> That's a lot we've already covered and we're not even 30 minutes in. So right now I'm just finishing the prep for the corn fritters. I'm beating one egg and I'm melting one tablespoon of shortening in the microwave. It should take about 30 seconds or so. So it turns out the boyfriend is coming out in an RV with his friends. And when the family gets to Nilbog, they run into the family they are apparently switching houses with, who look like American Gothic mixed with a little hillbilly. So the family goes into the house and see a spread of food coated with green icing. Grandpa Seth stops time with his magical ghost powers, telling Joshua to stop them from eating. Too bad he couldn't stop the family from moving altogether, because it's quite obvious the actors are trying not to move. And how does Joshua stop the family? He urinates on the food. Now, if I was in this situation, and time had completely stopped for 30 seconds, I don't know, I probably would have just grabbed all the food, taken it outside, and thrown it out on the ground. But then we wouldn't have gotten such great lines as this one. 
and you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it! God, this movie has such great one-liners. Anyways, Joshua is sent to bed, and we cut back to the RV, where Elliot's friend, Arnold, goes out for a walk, where he runs into a woman running through the woods, being chased by goblins. And just look at those costumes. The best papier-mâché Miss Hinton's kindergarten class could supply. Well, Arnold gets injured, and he and the woman run into an old house, inhabited by a woman named Credence. She offers the couple some broth for their wounds, and the girl turns into a pool of green goop, which leads to one of the most iconic memes of this movie. Oh my god! Now, I know everybody who's talked about this movie has shown this scene, but there's a reason we talk about it. It's supposed to be a scream of horrific enlightenment and fear, and it just comes off as someone who doesn't even care anymore. Just give me my check and get me out of here. <sighs> the reads of this script is just awesome. <laughs> All right, let's finish up this batter for the fritters. So here's our sifted dry ingredients, and to that I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of sugar, half a cup of milk, the tablespoon of melted shortening, the beaten egg, and about a cup and a half of corn kernels. Now we're just going to mix it all up and get it ready for frying. Okay, so there's a little vignette of Grandpa appearing in the wrong mirror, and he gives his usual warning about getting out of town. Then we cut back to the RV, where no one notices Arnold hasn't come back yet, and Drew decides to go to the store to get some food. By the way, anybody else notice the time displacement here? All the scenes in the house at this point have been at night, but all the RV scenes are in the day, but they're supposed to be at the same time. Oh well, there's a lot to cover. Anyways, Drew gets a lift from the sheriff, who gives him a green icing sandwich. Sandwich. Well, Drew gets to the general store where we meet the second most famous resident of Nilbog. There's no coffee here in Nilbog, it's the devil's drink! Actually, this actor was a patient in a mental hospital at the time of filming. He would have to get day passes to go out and film. I'm not even making that up. By the way, what's happening with Arnold? He's been turned into a shrub. Anyways, after Drew leaves the store, he's told to meet Arnold at the house and heads that way. Meanwhile, Joshua and his dad head to the market, but the entire town seems to be closed, and that's when Joshua learns something amazing. Neil Bog! It's got the spell backwards! Yeah, we got some real rocket surgeons going on here. So, Drew gets to the house, finds Arnold, tries to save him, but Credence stops him and cuts down Arnold. At the same time, Joshua is skateboarding through town and comes across a barn where, I guess, goblin church is happening? And the preacher man is condemning meat eating. Hamburgers! Steaks! The steak sausages! Hey, I don't make fun of you for eating carrots. Don't make fun of me for eating sausages. And yes, you can insert your joke here. And during this time, Holly has gone to see Elliot to read him the riot act. Joshua and his dad show up and take Holly and Elliot back to the house, leaving Brent, Elliot's last surviving friend, alone in the RV. And the funny thing is, nobody mentions that these two characters are missing from this party. Ever. Apparently, it's just not American to care about your friends, even though you forced them to go to the boondocks with you so you could have a hookup with your girlfriend. And I'm not even kidding. The director refused to have ad-libbing in his movie because he thought he knew how Americans talked and acted better than his entire American cast. <sighs> I guess pride cometh before the fall, or in this case, the plummet. Well, Joshua, his dad, Holly, and Elliot make it back to the house, and it took them so long that the entire town has come over to throw them a potluck. Joshua runs up to his room to talk to his grandpa and ends up being attacked by a goblin. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot at y'all, and I'm sorry, but I can't help it. There are so many plot points in this movie, it's hard to cover some of them without all of them. Well, let's fry these fritters up. 
We're going to do this in batches and all we're going to do is take a spoonful and drop it right into the hot oil and then cook them until they're golden brown. So Grandpa comes by and stops the goblin, and we find out that it was actually Credence, who goes back to her house and makes herself pretty with the power of magic. A little chapstick could have saved you a lot of effort, Credence. Anyways, back at the house, Grandpa gives Joshua a Molotov cocktail to make a diversion. Wait, why does a ghost have a Molotov cocktail? And why is he giving it to a kid? He can hold the Molotov, he can hold a lighter, why doesn't he just use it himself? But they're stopped by the Preacher Goblin, who begins chanting a spell to make Grandpa go away. Grandpa lights the Molotov with lightning, setting the Preacher on fire, and the family finally sees the truth. The town is full of goblins, oh! The family runs into the house, and the goblins besiege the family. At the same time, Brent is all alone in the RV, when he gets a visit from Credence, who begins seducing this underaged boy with corn. They begin making out and the stagehands start throwing popcorn at them. Okay, 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 okay. I know that it is a very flimsy excuse to make corn fritters, but you know what? Everything else in this movie is so flimsy, I don't even care. Back in the house, the family decides to hold a seance to reach Grandpa, and Grandpa teleports Joshua to Credence's house to lay hands on a magic rock, and the goblins attack the family. Meanwhile, Grandpa gives Joshua a bag with the secret weapon against the goblins, and then disappears. But wait, what's happening with Credence and Brent? No more. No more popcorn. So, is he dead? He doesn't look dead, and he wasn't killed in a traditional way that the goblins kill people. Is he literally just asleep in the RV covered in popcorn? And he's never brought up again in this movie. What happened to Brent? Hashtag justice for Brent. So Credence calls all the goblins back to her house, and they confront Joshua, who pulls out his secret weapon. A double-decker bologna sandwich! <laughs> yes, the greatest nemesis of the goblin, Oscar Meyer. So he eats the sandwich, his family runs in and all lay hands on the stone, and the goblins all die in a trail of paper mache carnage. The family returns home, and just when you think everything is alright, it turns out the goblins have made it to their house and proceed to eat Joshua's mother. And the movie's done. And so are the fritters. We're just gonna pile them high on a nice plate. And since I'm from the south and we serve everything deep fried with some form of mayonnaise, I'm gonna say serve these with some ranch, and a nice cold beverage. So, final thoughts on the film. What can I say about this movie that hasn't been said a hundred times or more? The acting is terrible, the writing is terrible, the story is a muddled mishmash of ideas blended up together to create an almost unfollowable bramble patch of ideas. The special effects are lackluster and lazy, and Everything that could go wrong with this movie did go wrong, but that's the glory of it. This movie has gone through the realms of bad into the world of so bad it's good. You don't watch this film for a succinct story with likable and relatable characters that you want to have overcome their trials and come out better for it. No, you watch this movie because it is so notoriously bad, with unrelatable characters getting into unrelatable circumstances. This is just a fun movie. So just have fun with it. So gather up your friends, make some great food, and have a great time. Well, thanks for stopping by, thanks for tuning in, and thank you so much for making this first year so awesome. Here's to many more.